well we're still on the um switch panel uh, but we have identified it in um in that the switches is the area that's the problem and um, what we've got is there's a lot of corrosion on a particular connector so what we're doing is just basically sanding that down making sure that that's a good connection but because it's intermittent then you know it's a poor connection basically uh, it sometimes works it sometimes doesn't work anytime you get something like that then it's a poor connection and poor connection can be from corrosion basically as the uh, in, um, it gets corroded the resistance um, increases and therefore the connection is doesn't work as well as it should do so we're just removing all the rust um, and uh, a little bit of wet and dry is um, uh, basically what I'm using now the wire which has got the worst corrosion of all on it that um, goes to the switch. And it's an earth switch. And it's, yeah, so it's a, a very important part of the connection is that that is the switch. So, of course, if uh, that's got poor uh, connectivity, then it's going to affect everything else. Well, the weather's not cooperating, so we're not putting the panel back in today. Uh, also, the panel is a little old. UV damage and things over the years have just made the plastic surround a little brittle and we've lost a corner here and a corner here. It's not very good. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a new surround and we're going to adhere that one to the new surround and then the new surround will be screwed in. That's going to take us a few days but with weather like what's going on now that's not really much of a problem. So that project was on hold for a bit and we're just going to move on and deal with something else. One of our subscribers has asked the question, what are the pros and cons of living abroad? <laughs> and I can tell you one thing that people don't realise is the fact that, you know, sometimes you live on a slant. We're way over five degrees. Let me get this right. I'm sitting at an angle and have I um, put the phone level? <laughs> yes. <Yeah, so laughs> So in a house, obviously, you're, you're, you're flat and you're always flat. When it's on a boat and you're living aboard, even in a marina, you can be at five degrees. You Beverly had to cook with the cooker gimbal today. Yeah. Um, and uh, we'll tell you some more pros and cons when it's sunny rather than uh, at night now. Oh, yeah, but uh, tomorrow it mightn't be doing this. Well, that's true. It is bendy. It is, oh, uh, there, there's the gust coming in. Oh! <laughs> The oh, other... blood and sand. <laughs> the other, the other problem um, with um, you know living aboard is because you're living in such a small space. It is so easy to get it messy. You know, you've got to be sort of like on the cleaning all the time. Yes, you don't have very much to clean because you're living in a small space, but it just gets messy very quickly. Okay, well, it's all go here in the kitchen, as you can see. Um, we're fortunate that we're in and have shore power, which means I can use things like the toaster. But in terms of modern appliances, the toaster and the kettle are about all we have on board these days. All the other things like um, food mixers and food processors, they're all gone. And everything's done manually. Our, our go-to weapon is a self-sharpening knife that sharpens itself every time you take it out of the sheath. And um, we have a small manual food processor that we pull the string on and it chops everything up. But that really is it. Even our coffee is done in a uh, cafetiere. It, um, you have to rethink how you do things. And that's why we have bought Mr. D, our, our, our standalone thermal cooker pot. We've got leftover chilli from yesterday. So we may as well have lunch before we get started. Then that way we've got the whole afternoon to do this. Um, because that way we can cook while we're at sea and not have to stand over this. But if you like cooking on gas, then there's a pro of being in a boat. Unless you put an induction hob in, which requires jam batteries. But, you know, you've got to just plan your cooking a little better. You've got to revise your menus, because the fridge, while good, is not brilliant. Um, 
things do go off more quickly in a boat fridge than they would in a domestic fridge because the temperatures aren't as even, they're not kept as cold. It's a lot colder at the bottom than it is at the top. If you put things like sausages at the top, they'll be off in a day or two. You put them at the bottom, they'll last a week. So you've just got to reorganise how you do things. And if you do that, everything will be fine. But you just can't transfer from a land kitchen to a boat kitchen and go bingo. It just doesn't work that way. So what's happening, Bow, Bev? Uh, one of the downsides of boat living. Uh, I need to go to the loo. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, Bevy, we've done a lot of the uh, disadvantages of living aboard, but what's the advantages? Uh, well, I think the big one, the reason I'm still wearing my hat, by the way, is I've just come back from the loo. <laughs> I've got a coffee in my hands. Um, I think the big advantage is freedom. That is the biggie. It's the sense of adventure, the ability to go where you want and see what you want and if you don't like the view, well, move a bit and find a better view. It's just, it, it takes some getting used to, it really does. And in our first year we spent a lot of time in marinas, second year we spent more time in mooring balls, third year we spent more time at anchor. So you can see that we're gradually moving away from the comfort blanket of being in uh, on land. But picking a wild spot and just going there and just putting the boat there and just being totally isolated. Um, you see all sorts of things. Seals, birds, whales, dolphins, uh, just life in general. Uh, the sunsets. The sunsets are absolutely gorgeous. The sense of tranquility, peace, the phone not ringing. <laughs> Yeah, it, it really is a liberation, isn't it? It's a totally different lifestyle and it really does take time to get into it. But once you're into it and you come back to land, I'll be honest, everybody on land looks crazy. It all looks absolutely mad. Everybody rushing about, phones stuck to their ears, nobody looking beyond about three footsteps. It's mad. Once you get out there and you get back into just following the rhythms of nature and just being part of it all, it's just so relaxing. There's all the downsides of uh, living on a boat in the fact that, you know, doing laundry, um, it's a bit more of a process. Whereas when I lived on a, in a house, all I had to do was sort of like, OK, it was laundry day, I'd do everything, put that in the, the washing machine, which I had in the house. Whereas now I've got to take it to the laundrette or, to, or put it into the uh, washing machines that's at this marina. So you've, again, it's something you've got to think about. There's so much stuff that you just don't have on the boat, just because there isn't the room for it. Um, and some pro projects like washing, which is just a, a normal everyday process, just makes, gets things a little bit more complicated. Even doing the shopping, you know, you've got to walk most of the time or something like that. Now, because we're in Bangor, we do have a use of a car, but, Normally that's not the case. Shopping is an all-day activity. Washing's one thing, but every now and then I also do the bedding and it's just such a big palaver when you do that. So it's just one of the many chores you have to do. And why's our doormat up by the winches? Oh, <laughs> the wind just keeps on catching it and it just sort of like turns it over and also when it rains it just gets soaked and it just holds the water so um, but I do love it I mean say look at it it's got penguins yeah another thing you've got to think about when you're living aboard is water supply when you're living in the house obviously you've got um, ample amount of water supply whereas on the boat you've got tanks and they need filling up on a regular basis now when we're out cruising um, we limit the amount of water that we use uh, for doing the washing up and all that kind of stuff and generally speaking we wash up once a day if we can get away with it yeah when we're out cruising definitely Cups, um, cups, get, cups get a bit of a, a bit of a rinse and a reuse, <laughs> don't they? Yeah. Uh, so that's what we do when we're out. But when we're in port and we've actually got access to water, then we are a bit more sort of like generous with our water. 
but it's just one of those many things and obviously uh, we've got solar for go being out so you've got to think about power but these I think are all the sort of like disadvantages of living abroad uh, but the real real big advantage is when it comes to summer and you can finally get out and explore and cruise and see so many wonderful places because it's just fantastic the places that are out there I think also we get to see a lot of things that most people don't get to see. Yeah, but also because of the way that we think and stuff like that. Um, you know, when we're looking at the waves and the wind and everything like that, you know, we, we're starting to understand how the seabed affects our waves, how everything affects us and, you know, I, I love that. It's like... I love the dolphins. Oh, I know you love the dolphins. We love the dolphins. We love seeing things. I mean, so we love seeing the birds. We've not caught one on camera yet, but I love seeing the gannets dive. They are just fantastic. That's not strictly true. We did catch one a couple of years ago in Hythe, but you've got to be very careful to see it. <laughs> yeah, you need binoculars to see it, and that's with the cameras. We just... We don't have the camera equipment, you know, because we just do our blog on the phone. Ours is just, it is just what it is.